Fallen for Person, this is Anton, and today we're going to discuss TRAPPIST-1 system once again, focusing on some of the most recent discoveries and some of the most recent studies, which essentially are all trying to answer the same question. Out of these seven terrestrial planets, can any of them potentially host atmosphere and liquid water, and can any of them potentially host life? But as you might have learned from some of the previous videos from the past two days, based on a lot of recent observations, including the James Webb Space Telescope observations, one of the main conclusions so far has been that there is a very high chance that a lot of these planets are potentially entirely barren. This essentially could be some kind of a collection of really hot, dry rocks, basically containing nothing on their surface. Or at least these were some of the preliminary discoveries based on the observations from the TRAPPIST-1b and TRAPPIST-1c. And because stars like TRAPPIST-1, which are of course known as the M-type stars or red dwarfs essentially make up something like 75% of all stars in our galaxy, compared to just 8% of G-type stars, which are similar to our Sun. If somehow this is true for all of these red dwarf systems, this would have a really big implication for the possibility of extraterrestrial life. But here there's also a really important side note. So far detecting anything around planets in these star systems have actually been kind of challenging and specifically detecting any kind of an atmosphere. And that's because red dwarfs actually complicate a lot of the analysis when it comes to the planetary spectrum. In many cases, because of the amount of star spots, they can actually be interpreted as something coming from the planet and not from the star, with many of these initial observations potentially being contaminated. Nevertheless, learning about this unusual star system approximately 40 light years away from us is of course very crucial if we actually want to learn more about terrestrial planets out there, and if one day we want to discover some kind of a extraterrestrial intelligence, or even just some kind of a simple life. And this is actually our first topic. Just a few months ago, researchers did actually take a look at this star system by using a radio telescope. And here there was obviously just one goal, detecting some kind of an alien technology, or some kind of an alien communication by observing the star system for approximately 28 hours. But in this case they did use an extremely specific technique. A technique known as planet-planet occultation. Which happens when one of the planets moves in front of the other planet and essentially presents us with a chance to potentially eavesdrop on any radio signals. And in this case, after these observations, they actually did discover over 2200 potential signals. Way more than predicted. But upon thorough analysis, None of these signals turned out to be artificial in origin. Pretty much all of them had some kind of a natural explanation. And so here for planets B and C, the two closest planets to the star, we can almost certainly say that no one on these planets is trying to communicate using radio signals. But even though these planets seem to not have any extraterrestrial communication, based on some of the recent studies, they do potentially have a chance to have atmospheres. And this is based on at least two separate studies that have reanalyzed some of the data from the James Webb, coming to slightly different conclusions from initial analysis. And so for example for the closest planet, TRAPPIST-1b, something really exciting was actually discovered by analyzing different frequencies of infrared light. Now first of all, based on the distance from the star, we know this planet is going to be really hot. At least as hot as Mercury, possibly as hot as Venus. But the initial studies from approximately a year ago, which you can learn about in some of the videos in the description, came to a conclusion that there doesn't seem to be anything on the surface either. As in no atmosphere and no possibility of any kind of water. And this was discovered by doing a really intriguing analysis when we actually observed the star and the planet by seeing different sides of the planet as it orbits the star. And so here during the orbit, different regions of the surface are going to be emitting different amounts of thermal infrared light. And in this case, if there is any atmosphere, we are going to be seeing additional emissions in certain frequencies, even from the dark side of the planet. For example, if there is CO2 here, it's going to be emitting certain frequencies of light that should be detectable to the James Webb. And so in the study we've discussed last year, based on the infrared observations in 15 microns, the overall conclusion was that there was no CO2 and the planet was most likely completely barren. But in this new study, Elsa Ducro and her team reanalyzed the data by also adding another wavelength, 12.8 micron. And turns out that here the actual observations were just a little bit different. Instead of having a very strong and a very stable 15 micron signature, the 12.8 micron observations could only be explained as one of the two potential scenarios. Either this was a planet with a very very young surface 
less than 1,000 years old and essentially a result of extreme volcanism, the so-called magmatic bare rock, or this planet was filled with hazy, carbon dioxide-rich atmosphere extremely similar to Venus. But it could not be a barren rock like previously assumed, which would actually produce different observations, and obviously it could not be an Earth-like planet. And that's actually a really exciting discovery because by using this new technique and new modeling, researchers actually discovered that the planet B might be a lot more exciting than we initially thought, with a 50% chance of having atmosphere or 50% chance of being volcanically active, with a process known as magmatic resurfacing, rejuvenating the surface every thousand years, which would also imply geologic activity and that by itself would be super exciting. But if it does have atmosphere, it potentially has something extremely similar to what we actually observe on Titan. Here's actually how Titan, Venus and Trappist-1b generally compare to one another. But in this case, because this planet is extremely close to the star, the atmospheric chemistry would be entirely different. Basically making this a really bizarre planet we currently cannot even imagine. Likewise, a somewhat similar discovery was also made about planet C, the second planet from the star. A year ago this was at first assumed to be also like an atmosphere, but a new analysis by Andrew Linkowski and his team, once again using very similar observations, focusing on 12 and 15 microns, also proposed a potential atmosphere that's just a little bit different from anything we imagined. And so even though this planet probably doesn't have a CO2 atmosphere, it might still actually have a really thick oxygen atmosphere, possibly as thick as 10 Earth atmospheres in terms of pressure. Or it can even be what's known as a steam atmosphere, where a type of a runaway greenhouse effect is basically driving liquid water into the atmosphere, turning this into a kind of a steam world. We've actually discussed these planets in one of the previous videos in the description. And so now planet C also has a chance of having a really bizarre atmosphere on its surface. Just not the atmosphere that was previously assumed and not the ones we're used to right here in the solar system. With several additional studies, such as this one by Joshua Christensen Totten and his team, even proposing that other planets do actually have a really high chance to not just have atmospheres, but also liquid water. And specifically as a result of a secondary atmospheric formation that would very likely take a few hundred million years, but would basically result in hydrogen reacting with oxygen and iron and producing water, heavier gases and a lot of important compounds in very large amounts on the surface. Now in this case this is just a model and a potential explanation, there is no physical evidence, but based on this model there is now new hope. A hope for these planets to maybe contain something interesting. And according to this model, planet TRAPPIST-1e, the one in the habitable zone, has an extremely high chance to have atmosphere and thus liquid water. And not just some liquid water, here we're talking about a huge ocean. So definitely a really exciting proposition. And one of the last studies takes this even a little bit further. Here Afonso Mota and his team wanted to actually find out how likely is anything to survive on these planets, assuming that that something is exposed to super flares from a typical red dwarf and are basically living in these extremely hostile conditions. And the focus of the study was on something we know really well, Aspergillus niger, a type of a black mold that usually grows in soil that's actually known for producing a lot of melanin, that compound that basically gives us tan. And this mold tends to produce these really bizarre shapes where a large number of spores basically end up releasing peptidomelanin into the surrounding medium. In other words, they tend to produce the environment enriched in melanin, not just inside the cells, but even outside of the cells. It's one of the most prolific producers of melanin, allowing it to survive extremely high levels of UV radiation. And so in this case, researchers wanted to basically simulate how likely is this mold to survive conditions around a star like TRAPPIST-1. In this case, this was done by simulating the environment and allowing these spores to grow in various saline solutions. And even when simulating radiation based on a super flare in a typical red dwarf, here the overall conclusion was that the spores would survive and would even thrive in certain conditions. Although not if directly exposed on the surface. Here they would have to be either inside water or underneath millimeters of soil. But more importantly, the more melanin they produced, the more likely they survived. Implying that technically, life could exist here and technically could live inside these oceans if they exist. But that's once again just a theoretical proposition and a theoretical analysis. Obviously we're not going to know if there is any life here for a very very long time. But despite all of these somewhat positive and somewhat optimistic studies, 
there is still one major problem with these red dwarfs. And it's not the fact that they have so many flares or produce so much radiation. It's also the fact that when these stars are much younger, or basically when M-types are just born and start to develop, they actually undergo an extremely hot stage in the early development that in theory could produce very hot conditions on the surface of all of these planets, which would last for hundreds of millions of years. And in theory, this would evaporate everything, turning all of these planets into just molten crust. And so basically, as of 2025, we still have absolutely no idea what's happening here, and whether any of these planets have anything on their surface, or if they can ever host habitable conditions. But we'll definitely come back and talk more about this once there are some updates or some additional discoveries, or once James Webb conducts additional observations, possibly discovering something new. For now though, this is still going to be an extremely exciting but also very mysterious system, and will probably stay this way until future observations. And so until future discoveries, check out some of the previous videos on the topic in the description below. Thank you for watching, subscribe, share this with someone who loves learning about space and sciences, come back tomorrow to learn something else, support this channel on Patreon by joining a channel membership or by buying the wonderful person t-shirt you can find in the description. Stay wonderful, I'll see you tomorrow, and as always, bye bye.